and welcome to Help My Daughter Loves Horses. I'm Allie, this is Noah, and we're here to help you enjoy horses in a fun, safe way. So for our next installment talking about aids, I want to go a little bit more into how to do upward transitions. Now, there are a few things that are important to remember about upward transitions. The first is that you never want to give your horse conflicting aids. So you don't want to yank on his mouth and then kick him at the same time because you're telling him stop, go, and he's not going to know what to do. And that's oftentimes when you get horses misbehaving because they're confused. The next thing to remember is that you shouldn't need to chase your horse through his transitions. So you should be able to ask, have him respond. If he doesn't respond, you can ask more strongly, but you don't want to be flailing around and having to kick and chase your horse and run him into the trot or run him into the canter. If you ask and he doesn't respond, you need to go back and figure out why he's not listening and work on him to get him to respond when you first ask him. It may be that you have to ride with the crop so that when you put your leg on and he doesn't listen, you give him a tap and then he knows that, oh, I have to listen to that leg aid. The next is you want to use as little aid as you can use and still get a response. So you'll notice with Noah, you might not even see my leg move. I've flexed the muscle and for him that's enough. He feels that and he steps off. Then the last thing that you have to remember is that your core isn't necessarily an aid, but it is required to be engaged for all of the aids that you do. So when you're asking for an upward transition, you want to engage those muscles in your stomach. You want to feel like your belly button is pushing in towards your spine because that will keep you centered on your horse. So if you ask your horse to trot and your, your core is all doughy and floppy, you're going to get left behind. So as he goes off, you're going to just sort of fall back and that's going to get him off balance too. So your core stays engaged, your head stays up, and your legs are working independently of the rest of your body. So even as you're squeezing or kicking with your legs, the rest of your body isn't swinging around. So I'm gonna do a walk to trot to canter transition, and you can watch how they all work. And you should really not see much. You should see my upper body stay still, my hands will stay steady, they're not gonna yank back, and my legs are gonna just close gently on him, and my seat is going to encourage him to move forward. So you'll see my seat start to move forward in the walk, the hips are going with him, in the trot they're bouncing forward with him, and in the canter they're rolling with the rocking motion. So that's encouraging him in each game. So I'm going to just go around and show you how each of those are done, and Noah's going to be a very helpful assistant. Of course the challenge here is that a very good transition shouldn't be noticeable at all. It should be subtle and quiet, meaning you're not flailing your legs around. You just use the inside of your calf to press gently against the inside of your horse and ask your horse to move on. Additionally, you want your hips to move nice and easily, as you see here with the trot, and you'll see even more so with the canter. My hips move easily and smoothly with the rhythm of his canter. However, my upper body doesn't flail around, doesn't fall forward, and doesn't fall back. You want to keep it strong and steady while you're allowing your hips to move forward in his transition and encouraging him to move forward and move into the new gait. If you can do these things in your transitions, you're doing really well. Thanks for watching this video, Help My Daughter Loves Horses. Check out our website for more.